Hey, what's up everyone? Today we're going to implement a pretty cool looking dashboard using Telegraph, InfluxDB, and Grafana. We're going to implement this on an Ubuntu server running on a Raspberry Pi, but this will work on any Linux workstation. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I am on the InfluxDB website and I'm going to go into the installation section and just grab the installation for Ubuntu. And if you're wondering what InfluxDB is, it's a time series database. And basically it's just a database that has been optimized to take in time series data. Our server is gonna have an agent on it, which is gonna be taking metrics like CPU, hard drive space, temperature, things like that. And it's gonna be sending this information into InfluxDB to be stored. And then we're gonna be able to grab that data with Grafana and make a really cool looking dashboard. So let's go ahead and get started with the installation here. I'm just gonna grab this into my clipboard. And this is basically just adding the sources to my repository here. So I'll just paste this in here. I'm gonna head back to that site. And now it's saying update your app catch and then install InfluxDB, then start the Influx service. So let's go ahead and put that in. My app cache is updating, so it'll probably take a few minutes. I'll go ahead and speed this up. All right, the installation is complete. Let's go ahead and start the Influx database service. And we'll just uh, do a little dance. All right, it looks like it has started. So let's type Influx, and this is gonna bring us right into the database here. And we can see we're connected. And if you do show database, show databases uh, you can see that there's no databases other than this internal one that's there by default let's go ahead and create a database so i'll go create database and you can call this whatever you want but i'll call it rpi monitoring and now if i do my show databases we can see that we have this rpi monitoring database now the next thing we want to do is create a user that has permissions on this database. And then we're going to give that user to Grafana. It's going to use it to pull the data out of that database. And Telegraph is going to use that user as well to push the data into this database. So I'm just going to copy and paste a command here. And by the way, all these commands are available on my website. If you want to check that out, it's in the description below. So we did create user RPI with password RPI, all privileges. All right, and if we do show users, let's try that again. And uh, typo there, so it's actually show users, not shows users. And there we go, we got RPI and they are an admin. So that's all we need to do in uh, InfluxDB. The, the setup of that is very simple. We don't have to build a schema or anything like that. These time series databases just basically take metrics into them and then they build the tables themselves. So there we go. We'll go ahead and clear the screen. And now we're gonna install Grafana. And Grafana is the dashboard. After we have Grafana installed, we'll do Telegraph. So let's get started with Grafana. For Grafana, we're gonna go ahead and add the GPG key. And I need a sudo at the start here. So I'll do that. And then add this to the apt repository. All right, apt repository has been updated. Now let's update our cache. So app cache has been updated. Let's go ahead and do apt install Grafana. We'll go ahead and hit yes. And it's gonna install Grafana. And then we're gonna go ahead and start the server and then we'll log in. And my camera is almost running out of batteries. So we're really just gonna have to haul through the rest of this tutorial. Hopefully uh, things update a little bit quicker, but it's not seeming to. One eternity later. All right, Grafana has been installed. Let's do a uh, system control start grafana dash server and then we'll do a sudo system control status grafana server and it's active running so we should be good to go 
Oh, and one thing before I jump into the web GUI of this, we should actually enable this to start up on boot. So we'll do a sudo system control enable Grafana dash server. And I said system control, I thought, but I did not type it. So now Grafana is going to start whenever this server boots. All right. So now that we have that set, let's go ahead and log in. And the default credentials here is just admin and then admin. And we need to set a new password. So I'll put my super secure password there. And I hope you guys do the same. So you can see how slick this dashboard is. Let's go ahead and start off by configuring our data source. So we'll hit this cog wheel and go to data sources and then add data source. So Prometheus is a very popular option, but we're going to be using InfluxDB. So let's go ahead and select that. We're basically just going to be using mostly the defaults here. I wish this would auto populate, but it does not. I'm going to use localhost. But if you wanted to, your Grafana server could be different from the server that's hosting the data, the InfluxDB. So if that was the case, you would just put it in the name of the Influx database server here. Since everything's on the same server for my lab, we're just going to be doing that. The bottom here, this is the database we created, which is RPI monitoring. And then it was RPI and RPI. And that should be enough. Let's go ahead and hit save and test. And green means good. So we are in business. And it looks like there's a data breach here. And that's because it doesn't look like there's a cert installed on this server. It's just using HTTP. So we'll just safely ignore that message. So we have our data source now. The next thing we want to do is configure the dashboard. So we'll go ahead and hit this plus symbol and we're going to import. And then all we need to do here is type in 10578. And this is going to grab the Raspberry Pi dashboard from Grafana.com. So we'll go ahead and hit load. And not down there, apparently. We need to load it up here. And then we import it. Oh, we need to choose a data source, which is InfluxDB. Now we import it. And look how beautiful that looks. But you'll notice that everything says NA. And that's because we've set up the dashboard. We set up InfluxDB to store all the data, but nothing's collecting the metrics yet to send to the database. So the last thing we have to do is set up an agent on the server that's going to populate the database with all the metrics. And once that's done, this dashboard is going to light up like a Christmas tree. So let's go ahead and finish off this tutorial by installing Telegraph. So I'm back in my server and we should just need to do apt install Telegraph. And there's no need to add anything to your apt repository. It should all just be there by default. All right, so Telegraph has installed. The next thing we need to do is configure Telegraph. So we'll go ahead and open the Telegraph configuration now. You can find it at ecttelegraphtelegraph.conf, and we'll scroll down until we get to InfluxDB. It's relatively close here, and it doesn't have any configuration yet, so I will paste in my configuration here. And you can see that it's pretty simple. You put in the URL of the database server. Since it's the local host, I just put in the loopback IP, set the database name, go ahead and save that, and close it out. Once that's done, do a system control, restart Telegraph. And that should be it. Let's go ahead and check our dashboard and see if there's any data in there now. And it looks like we need to log back in. So I'll log back in. And I forgot what I set my password to. Oh, no, I got in. All right, so it looks like this dashboard is starting to fill out. You can see the uptime there, and we got our CPU usage and RAM, and just a whole bunch of nice, beautiful graphs that haven't really filled out yet since uh, 
we don't really have a timeline, but after an hour or so, we'll have enough data to show nice, beautiful graphs of uh, the metrics going through. Um, pretty easy installation to get a nice, beautiful dashboard. And you learn quite a bit about Linux just implementing these services. And really, it's not that hard at all and a fun little pet project. So if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and smash that like button to get the DevOps message out to everyone in the world. 